Hello everyone. Today is scan results day. Well, technically it's the day after scan results day. We had scan results day yesterday. We started filming in the morning. We went in for my appointment. We received the results and we stopped filming for the rest of the day. We could not film because we were crying the whole day and couldn't find it in ourselves to build up the strength to talk about what was going on. I think we let out as many tears as we possibly could have. <clears throat> and I'll go over skin results. So yeah, now we can talk. So here's my man. <laughs> Go ahead. So uh, her doctor came in and went over the scan results. And we'll start with the lungs. Um, there are tumors growing in the left lung. There are tumors growing in the right lung. She still has her left pleural effusion, which has cancerous fluid in it. And she now has a small pleural effusion on the right side. Um, and then there were about, if I'm remembering correctly, five to six new lesions that are growing in her brain. And then the kind of bombshell of the scan was, if you think of the brain as an orange, their lesions are in the pulpy area. Those are treatable with targeted radiation. And then there's this area around the brain that's kind of like the rind of an orange, the mm -hmm. peel of an orange. Mm -hmm. There's cancerous fluid in there, mm -hmm. they found. That's called LMD disease. Um, and I believe it travels all the way down the spine. Goes all the way down the spine. And that one's um, evil. Mm -hmm. That one is not treatable with traditional chemos or targeted therapies because of the blood-brain barrier. They just don't travel to that area. And targeted radiation like she's gotten in the past is not effective in treating that area. So we were told that this LMD is kind of untreatable. Um, if this was Three months ago, our doctor said it's it was completely untreatable. It didn't exist to try to treat this. Now there's something they can do to hopefully help a little, but it's not much. So... No, it just buys a little time. Buys a little bit more time. So to say the least, the scan results were not good. And they were very hard to hear. And then I asked my doctor if this now meant we had a timeline because we have not had a timeline this whole journey. Whenever I asked if it meant we had six months to live or a year to live at any point, he would say, no, we're not at any point where I can give you a timeline timeline correct something like that yep because of all the new treatments and constantly changing. constantly changing he's always been very upfront and honest and said I can't Excuse give you me. that and you asked that brave question which neither of us wanted to ask and I wanted to ask <laughs> he very kindly said you know well, what do you guys think based on what you've seen and what you've heard and I quickly said Yes, I think this gives me a timeline now. And then he shifted to me, and I said, I don't know. And he's, I hope not. You said, I hope not. I hope not. not. And he said, but what do you think? What do you feel in your heart? And I said, yes. And that, that was it. And he went, mm -hmm. And he broke the news to us that... And I said, how long does that mean? And he said, I, have I said that here yet? He said, you have six to nine months to live hopefully could be more could be less
So that was our bombshell yesterday. He didn't cry in the appointment. He just kept petting me and getting information and I was just sobbing. <gasps> you know, that kind of crying. And then as soon as the team stepped out for something, they went to get some information. He's just started bawling. Broke down. Um, we asked more questions after that. Do you remember if any of them were anything? So I, I asked kind of a hard question. If the disease that's kind of causing this timeline is in the brain, are we looking at her losing functions, inability to speak, walk, talk, all those things that are controlled by the brain, memory? Mm -hmm. Because I'm, you know, we're both afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And he said that most of the area that this is affecting is with motor movements. Mm -hmm. So your ability to move your eyes correctly, walk, move your arms, that kind of thing. And a little bit with memory. So that's concerning, you know. But your mobility has been pretty limited, so I feel like we can, we can hang with that. Um, I'm terrified. I know, me too. You know, we've talked that... Jenny doesn't want to be alive if it means she's not here mentally. Yeah, if I'm just laying in a hospital bed in our home and I can't hang out with my kids and my husband and my family and friends. You don't want that. Send me home. And neither do we want that for her, you know. We don't want you to be stuck here not knowing what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we definitely needed time to process all that. It, it hit like a ton of bricks. We, you instantly called your sister and... Mm. She helped me with some things and then um, my sister, and I didn't want to tell anyone because I didn't want it getting around to my children before right. we could tell I them. tell them. Yeah. So it was like three people maybe knew and um, once my kids knew, I was comfortable with everyone knowing. And for the first time in forever, I wasn't eager to get my information out there. Like I'm always happy to share my information, always willing to give tips or, oh, here's what I did when, when my constipation, mm. you know, like I'm not shy, I'm always happy to help. And with this, I wanted to hide not let anyone know. I was so sad and ashamed and embarrassed. I was terrified to let everyone down yeah. and have to tell everyone this bad news. I know the pain that this news is causing me and I know it's the cancer doing it, but I feel like it's I'm part of it even though I'm not. And I feel like I need to say I'm sorry even though I'm not doing it, it's the cancer. I feel like I need to apologize to everyone that I'm hurting when I give them this information. Which I think you said I'm sorry to me yesterday, like... Many times. hundred times, mm -hmm. yeah. And we keep reminding you that there's nothing for you to apologize for. I know. But... We told some really, really close family members, which was heartbreaking and hard, and a conversation you never want to have. Um, by now we've told more people yeah because um, once we told our kids we told all of our close mm -hmm. friends and family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I want this to be out there this is my own personal and I know you believe it too we are not sitting here and saying well the doctor said this and that's it you know it's we're gonna live by six to nine months and that's all we get. We understand science, we understand higher power, we understand the world. As Ellis says, miracles. Miracles happen, right? So we're not sitting here giving up. We'll mm -hmm. talk about what next steps are looking like for you for treatment. Mm -hmm. But we also are realistic. We've known from the minute we got this diagnosis that Lung cancer is an absolute beast of a cancer. Um, it doesn't have a lot of research going towards it and funding. It has the least of all the other because cancers. Because of the stigma. Because of the stigma. So 
when you from inst- smoking. When you instantly Google lung cancer, you will see that a person making it past five years with lung cancer is very rare. It's like a 6% chance to live past five years. But we're never going to live like by that. statistics. But we, you know, our doctor and our team has been like our family. And when they were very honest with us and told us we should tell our kids and get our affairs in order. Yeah, they said to like do wills and all that stuff. Could you guys let us know in the comments important things to do right now? So like our doctor said a will and I don't make, know what else. Make my, sure. My, my, uh. Advanced directive, make sure I, I want to redo my advanced directive because I was naive when I first did it. Um, anything like that, if you guys know any of it that we should be doing, please let us know. We are naive to this stuff. Our heads are spinning with a countless list of things we want to do for the kids and for you and for mm. memories. And and then there's all this medical stuff that's also happening in the background. It's But like all the legal stuff we need more help with yeah because we don't know how that stuff works so if you guys could please help us out and give us information that we need to be doing that would be great yeah maybe a list yeah a to-do list so next steps um you know uh our doctor was very honest and said if this was three months ago i probably would have recommended you for hospice at this point um, but because of this new therapy that is available, there's only two centers in California, one being in San Diego, which is where we are being sent. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one's at Loma Linda. Mm-hmm. Um, it is called proton therapy. It is basically what I took from it. We could be wrong because we just got all this information. And it's so much information. So much. But it's basically whole brain and spine radiation. That's what I heard. Um, it's over a, a 10 day period and this will, what it sounds like is you're putting a bandaid on a gaping wound. So it's going to help a little, but it's not going to like take care of all the cancer and we're going to move on and go on to the next treatment. It's not like that. So it can help, but it, it can't do everything that it needs to do to stop this cancer from continuing to grow. This area of the brain is is really hard to treat so we're gonna go through with that Um, it will cause you to lose all your hair we were told so we'll have that which is no problem we will be down in San Diego for a while because it's a two-week treatment not quite sure when not quite sure when but we'll we'll, figure it out we'll figure it out uh, we haven't decided if we're taking the kids or not, or family, or who it knows. It depends, like, we I don't, don't know. even know. We don't know. And then, once that is under control, our doctor said we'll talk about what to do for the lungs. Because as you heard from the scan results, there's a lot of activity going on in her lungs, too. So. We might be doing other treatments. There might be other treatments to do there. To so the lungs. Right. Um, right. What are your rules? So, mm-hmm. rules. Um, I think that, well, Jenny has said that if we ever hit this point and we ever get this news, that she has one rule, and that's for for her and us to be surrounded by family and positivity. And what we mean by that is if we're just sitting watching a movie and inviting family over, let's have a good time doing it. If we're doing chores, bring the family over, let's do it. If you have a random taco night, she doesn't want, I don't want this last months to be completely sad and scared and alone and depressed. Obviously we're all grieving. Everyone in the family is completely hit right now. Let's make it all fun. But let's just do as fun as we can. Let's have a food fight. Because she deserves it. And the kids deserve it, you know? And Yeah. And so she's having like a nightmare right now. Or a really good dream chasing a squirrel. Mm -hmm. But that's our rule and we're going to stick by it. Positivity. Mm -hmm. Please. Love, family, time. Love, family. So, you know, everybody we've told, we've told that too. We want to keep it as positive as possible. We know everybody's broken. 
But let's do this together. And I don't know if this helps anyone, if anyone's holding on to any bitterness or resentment towards God or anything. I have never been one to do that. Um, even when my Annie Kimi died, I never did that. And I think it's because the way I view things is we are in a world where we've been given the opportunity to make choices. We have freedom and our choices to lead us to have a very toxic planet, even though the planet itself is not toxic. Is it toxic? I don't know. But we create a lot of toxic elements in this world mm -hmm. to where we set us up with set ourselves up with trouble so it's not that i think god is here's cancer for you here's cancer no, for you. or punishing or... no i think it just happens in the world we live in and i have no resentment i have had since the beginning prayers for strength and Peace. peace during this whole journey and I have gotten it almost as much as I've wanted. I've had a little bit where I'm like, please more, please more peace, please more strength. But overall, I've been so grateful for what I've been given and I hope everyone else can find peace and no resentment because I don't think it helps and I don't think it's necessary. Does that sound weird? Do I sound weird? No. And I think that we will have random days where we break down. I think we'll have random days where we're really happy. I think we'll do some just we're th we're this all out day. of the blue stuff. The kids too. All day. And what I do know and what I told my family is that this is one strong person right here and you have been since the beginning since the day we found out so you'll never stop fighting and never stop living and we're just gonna keep going that's all we can do and this uh, Information sucks, <laughs> but one thing that we've never lacked is love and heart and strength. Just keep going. Yeah. Every day is a gift, you guys. Cherish your time with your loved ones, even if it's a furry loved one like this. Even if it's a virtual loved one like this, mm -hmm. like you and me. You know, cherish each other, cherish all of it, because it's every day is a gift, truly a gift. And we're blessed to be sitting here next to each other, able to hold each other. My goodness, you're going to miss this one day, you know? You're just going to want a big hug from wifey. And you won't have it. But here, you, here's what you do, guys. Remind Kyle when I'm not here, and he's crying and saying, I just want to hug my wife. We say, Kyle, remember Jenny said, get a big pillow and hug it like it's her. Hug it tighter. She wants this big hug, Kyle. So that's what he has to do. You guys remind him. Hug the pillow, okay? <laughs> Do people do that? I think that's nice. Okay, can I have my pillow back? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm trying to lighten the mood. That's what Kyle and I do. Hopefully we don't offend any people ever. We try to lighten the mood with humor because um, humor's big in our house. My dad was always a funny guy and used humor to get through stuff. And he grew up watching Friends where Joey taught him that it was me, the funny guy that made everyone laugh. So. And Chandler. And Chandler, so he wanted to always be the funny guy. He liked it. You, you okay? Yeah. You what? I use some humor tonight with the kids. Yeah. Try to break them up a little bit. When they were sad. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It helps. I hate this. I hate what you're going through, but... Uh, we feel sick to our stomachs. I'm probably going to film more now because I'm dying. And I want to film as much of my last days. And it might not be as edited because... I won't have as much time if I'm filming every day, or almost every day, but I want the kids to be able to look back at as much as they can. So I think I'm gonna be filming my last days. So if you guys wanna follow along on watching me, um, my life end, me in the end of life process, please come along, we will be filming. And We'd love your words of encouragement and support and prayers. It would be so greatly appreciated. Some stuff may be filmed for behind the scenes. I don't know. I've got a lot of work to do. Yep. A lot, a lot, a lot to do. But he said he's going to help me get all prepared. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing you have to do is go into that bed tonight and sleep next to those beautiful kids. I love it. I told them we might be sleeping in bed with them every night till I die, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what, we'll find out what is safe and we will do what we can while it's safe and stop when we have to and come up with the <clears throat> next best solution at that point. Yeah. All right, you ready? We're gonna go to bed with the kids in our bed and we will see you guys soon soon i love you guys <laughs>